Hi, this is Craig, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. You know we're at the Annapolis Sailboat Show filming catamarans, walking through them, giving you our impressions, giving a final review at the very end. And I'm gonna flash a bunch of boats on the screen right now. These are all the boats we've already covered. If you haven't seen these episodes and you're interested in any of these, go back and check out one of two playlists. The one from just this year is called the Annapolis Sailboat Show 2018. And then there's one called Comparing Catamarans, which is incorporating all the reviews from last year and this year. There is merit to going back and watching last year's episodes because there were some boats that were there last year that weren't here this year and there's some boats that were here both years but the model they brought last year was way more impressive than the model this year so definitely go back and check those out in this episode we're going to cover the balance 526 and this is probably the perfect boat if money was no option it's built for speed with a lot of carbon fiber parts but it has all the interior comforts of a cruising catamaran so it's the best of both worlds and we had the good fortune of having Phil Berman on board when we were there. He's not only the owner of Balance Catamaran, but one of the designers of the boat, so he knows it inside out and backwards. He's gonna show you everything about this boat that makes it awesome. But before Phil gets to his very detailed tour, there's a little clip at the beginning that's kind of funny, so I left it in there. As Janice is getting on board, she shows her gullibility when somebody from the boat who recognizes from her channel starts yelling over her and saying hi and saying, come on board, I wanna show you my boat, and she falls for it hook, line, and sinker. Now, as a police officer, you kind of build up this bull shit meter and I could tell that this guy was pulling her leg, but it's funny to see how far she'd go. Anyways, check it out. So we're getting on the balance oh, 521. Okay. Oh, awesome. We're so glad. Come on board my boat. We're going to see your boat you live on? <laughs> yes, please. That means I get to goof off and relax and not say anything. Ugh. So the owner and it's over here apparently. Are you, are you kidding though, right? What? Is this your boat? It's not my boat. Okay. Not oh, you're, a, you're never mind. Dis this. Disregard. He's a big liar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Phil Berman. I'm the owner of the Multi Oil Company and also Balance Catamarans. Okay. I've been a yacht broker since I was uh, almost 13. I assembled Hobie Cats in '63. <laughs> this I sold 830 catamarans in my life, and uh, I designed this boat myself with Anton de Toy because I wanted to create a high-performance cruising catamaran for a couple to sail easily. I actually designed the boat for my wife and I. Uh, we built this boat in St. Francis, South Africa. It's uh, all foam core, uh, e-glass, and carbon in all the high load areas. So all the beams, all the structural members of the boat are carbon fiber. You can't see it because we paint it when we're done. Um, all the furniture is foam core. Uh, we use only the lightest stuff, almost no stainless on deck. We make our own composite parts, composite beams, um, because we're trying to keep it all really light. So the light ship on this boat is about 12 tons, so we're around 26,000 pounds, which enables the boat to easily cruise in the 10 to 12 knot range without being pushed, and we've had them up to 27 knots. So this is a really high performance cruising boat, but an easy boat to sail. Um, a distinctive feature of the boat is what we call the Versa Helm. It's an idea that I came up with out of my frustration for coming up with the right helm system. When it's really cold and it's nasty, you, you want to have the top closed and you want to be able to pilot your boat from, from, from a warm, comfortable space. So when it's raining, nasty, and you're potting, you've got throttles, the sight lines of the boat enable you to see both bows and both sterns when you're cruising on the boat uh, in any kind of conditions. We use rain aircraft glass windows to reduce glare and, and, and offer the clarity that enables you to see really well. Mm -hmm. Marine glass windows are also better because they don't craze and they don't leak and then in five years from now, six years from now, you don't have to replace them. Um, so that's a quality decision that we made. So with the Versa Helm, when it's bad, you're down here. When the weather's nice and you want to sail up top and do some reefing and stuff, you slide that there, you put it in place, you walk up here, Clip this down, and then you're up here. That's what I didn't know last year. And when you're up here, when you're sitting, you can see over the coach top. But when you're anchoring the boat, we have a stand, and you can stand up, and you can, can see, see both bows, and you can communicate with the person that's using the anchor. Excellent. You can see both bows and that stern to look at the port stern. You have to look down a little bit, which is yeah. true of all this design, and all of the reefing. And sail handling comes to two electric winches um, up here. So this boat has uh, a V-shaped mainsail system, no traveler. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with no traveler designs, but in a no traveler design, 
you can detach one side of the main sheet. You can put it over here when you want to sail out wind, but you can take that and you can attach it. Am I moving too quickly? No, that's fine. You can attach it over here and then attach the other one there. And when you're sailing downwind, the boom is always in a permanently banked position. You don't have to use a preventer because it's always in a prevented state. There's no way to have an accidental jive because you're always in a banked position, okay? It gives you incredible sail adjustment. So the lines for uh, the main sheet are up here, all the reefing lines and the main halyard, okay? We use uh, Yanmar engines, okay. dual Raycore filters uh, in the Yanmar. Our steering is um, a mechanical system with Edson racing sprockets and Spectra cord, so there's no hydraulic steering to brake, and it's a, a the, the helm feel is, is like on a racing boat. Mm -hmm. um, when you go up on deck, the decks are flat. Mm -hmm, very flat. Space. We've taken very the lower shroud and placed it on the inside so there's an easy walkway. Mm -hmm. All this is in carbon. Mm. Oh, when you come up on deck, you have a very large walker here which runs from here to here. Um, it's a big cavity and I've got a lot of buoys in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and a step. We have a line storage bag over here where all the lines from the mast go down in a little bag. We put a fuel transfer pump in here so that if you're going to go into the South Pacific or across the Atlantic and you want some extra fuel, you just put a bladder tank in there. Because a lot of people ask the question, how much tankage do you have? Well, on a performance boat like this, you don't need much gas because you're sa if it's seven knots of wind in this boat, you'll be going seven knots. It's a wind speed boat. But if you do want more fuel, it's better to just have temporary storage because most of the time you don't need it. Uh, all of our boats come with a launcher on, on a bowsprit with a what we call a screecher to power up the boat. The anchor is on the front of the boat in a big roller so that when you drop the anchor, there's no way that you can fishtail around at anchor until you get your chain secured. Um, our escape hatches are in the sides of the hulls and they're deeply recessed so water isn't going to be piling up and leaking on them. Those are two big uh, bow lockers there. What's that? I love the seat space, and I love that yours face forward. I love to sit in the bow underway. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're kind it's of- fun. It's fun. It's clean, it's, you know, it's simple. This is an offshore tramp, very porous, so this is a blue water boat. Uh, it's made to you know, do deep water voyaging. Uh, it's got a self tending blade chip, so if you are out day sailing, you want to just set the tracks on either side center the main sheet and you just turn the boat and it just flops over you know because it's a high performance boat and because it's pointing very high it, it's not traveling nearly the same distance through the wind as a, as a charter cap right. and our boats we build them either with a keel or with dagger boards this is this one has a performance keel but we okay. also do them with dagger boards okay yeah. oh yeah most people la lather the top of their boat up with solar panels um, we allow them to use whatever solar that they want but we have found that the uh, raised panels with air coming underneath them work much better, perform better, um, and oh. they, they don't burn. They're, they're just, we just find them better, but people can do whatever they want. Okay. Huh. All of our boats are really semi-custom. We have really large steps going down, mm -hmm. secure steps. On most of our boats, we have a downhelm seat that okay. goes here in a larger lounge. Gotcha. But people make a choice of what they want. Okay, so that's an option to have. Well, actually, the, the standard or... boat comes now with a down helm seat. Okay, here, right on. This is a larger lounge in the back. Okay. okay. That table is on posts and drops down into a day bed, and the life raft is stored underneath here. Okay. On this boat, we stored it under here. Okay. Okay. So if it's you a beautiful into dining area. Long, I'm gonna just peek at this. So, so when you're in the galley of the boat. Oh, uh, big beautiful U-shaped galley. Yeah, so it's a big U-shaped galley with um, double sink. One of the things that. Uh, that our boat is, is all our cabinetry is handmade. Mm -hmm. Everything is made custom for the boat. And so rather than lift up cushions to go underneath, Ooh, la, la. we have big large easier drawers access. on your both access. sides. Huge dining area the, with a beautiful um, table. The boats come with mm -hmm. either two fridges in one thing or two freezers in one thing or a fridge freezer combo. We usually suggest that people get a fridge freezer combo because 
a lot of times you don't need both units and you can turn off the one unit and just have the fridge freezer uh -huh. when it's just two people and you're hanging yeah. out and you don't need yeah. to use that power consumption. This table drops down and flips over and this can become a bed. All right. So if you're voyaging shorthanded, you have the Versa helm down, the person on watch sits there, the other person can sleep here if you're in rough weather and you're right together, nobody has to wait. You can holler out at them and they can come if they need you. Um, so this window you see lifts mm -hmm. up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wherever you are in the boat, you have sight lines. You're big always connected windows. with the outside on the boat. So it's really a big part of the design. We raise the seating here so that when you're sitting on the mm -hmm. boat, you are looking out over the deck of the boat, mm -hmm. which is really quite important to the design. So if it was really cold and you didn't want to be at the Versa Helm, you'd lock the boat down and you'd steer with your remote autopilot if you were needing to steer the boat. Right. The chart plotter always goes up there, and okay. not in, you know, down below. And then now you're in the owner's hull mm -hmm. on the boat. So I'm a big fan of Huge. big showers. Yeah. My wife and I like to shower together. I really don't like claustrophobic spaces. Yeah. So in a lot of performance cats, they'll put the beds back here, and then they'll put uh, the owner shower in, in there. But in here the, you can have a really nice one. Everything fish. in the boat is accessible. So this is the black water tank here. If you were to come in here and I drop that down, that is the uh, hot water heater. Okay. Everything in the boat is accessible. Even your steering system, which is here. This is your Edson sprockets coming down from the Versa Helm. It's a mechanical system. It's very, very difficult to break and it leads to an absolutely gorgeous feel when you're sailing. Electric heads. Mm -hmm. um, nice countertop. Yeah. I'm going to give a peek. It's very good in here. Big, you know, big vanity. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very little. As you go amidships here, you're going to find that we have more beautiful. actual cabinetry and storage than any other performance cat. We have all these drawers yeah. here. The washer dryer. Oh, the washer dryer. Oh, my goodness. The washer dryer is here. Everybody who watches us know if that's a must. A must for me. Yes. But actually, you'll talk to some of our owners who got them and they don't like them. They don't they, use they them. They don't use them, yeah. It depends on who. That won't be me. That won't be you, yeah. Um, <laughs> all of our wiring and systems, and this is a little harder for you to picture, um, our, e everything in the mm -hmm. boat is like, um, easy it's like a super control. yacht. Everything's labeled. Nice. Um, this like. is a lithium ion system on this Even boat. I could change a few things here. <laughs> you could, and, and yeah, and you can actually read the, read everything, see? Oh yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, it's quite sophisticated. Okay, nice. And then the, the inverters are down below. Just quite good. And more storage. Mm -hmm. more, you know, Beautiful. Everything. Window. Yeah, it's all there. I love this this hallway with all the bright cabin. I love the wood. So it's, is it real wood veneer, I assume? Yes, it is real wood. That's important yeah. as well. Yeah, it's ash and we hand finish it. We oh, make beautiful. all of our furniture. This is my builder, Johnny Parmon. Okay. <laughs> this is Anton DeToy, who designed the boat with me. Right on. And this is Chippy, who makes all of our furniture. Sweet. We're a small family kind of company. We, we're 50 to 60 workers, and um, mm. each boat is kind of a hand-built labor of love. And where do you build it? In St. Francis, South Africa. Okay. So I'm sitting in the window seat now, and you can see this is very big. I love this. Yeah, you can sit up and read, and when schedule. you're at anchor, you can lift that up, and you've got great airflow. The aircon unit pops out here. Um, and if you look at the sides of the boat, all this awesome material steps. here mm -hmm. is is actual glass. There's no liners in the boat. We oh goody. we hand sand and finish. Uh, we hand sand and finish. The the boat takes uh, about forty five to fifty five thousand labor hours. It's probably one of the highest labor hour boats that you'd see. Right. What's nice about this is it keeps it very light, but also it can't mildew. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's you can wash like it. Our Beneteau yeah. lining has completely fallen down hundred yeah. percent. Like yeah. yeah, liners are more storage liners under the bed. Lots yeah, of having, drawers. Sold a lot of used ones. I I, I know that. Ooh. Yeah. Do you, how many a year? How many hauls a year Three. do you do? Three a year. Yeah. Yeah. So well, as you probably know. Um, when we first introduced the boat uh, two, well, two years ago, we were the uh, cruising world. We won import boat of the year mm. and best multi over 50 feet. Then that's the big award is the import boat of the year. So we is it now? Okay, because there's a lot of it. They're mostly imports. I mean, obviously. Well, it's the only. Yeah, it's the big granddaddy of awards. So yeah. Any boat that we, all monohulls, every boat that came in, we were the grand prize winner. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay, not just cats. So this is the no, not just cats. We, yeah, every all of them. I would yeah. put a cushion here. For Where? me, for my, I, for my bum, this for my bum. Oh yeah, we I, can put a cushion there. Obviously, put a nice 
window seat That's for moi. That's the first time I heard that idea, but I might do that. <laughs> I like that. And yeah, I'm going to peek so in this closet. Oh, this is a vanity, which would be a desk office. Oh, well, this is a cute it, corner, man. It can be whatever Very you cute want. corner. Yeah. Lisa With wanted a makeup room there, so we did that. So yeah. It's a little makeup table. It's cool. I never wear makeup except to the boat show. I only put mascara. So in. in the nav station area, mm -hmm. people can do whatever they this. want. Some people make this an entire cabinet because they realize that a nav station they don't is something sit there. like an anachronism. Yeah. And they would rather have storage here. But some people like a traditional nav. And then for me, I like to have it in that exact spot. For some reason, it feels right. Well, it's very important that on this nav station that the seat that we use is a slightly taller seat because uh -huh. you, you're you going to want to sit here yeah. so that you can see out when you're when you're voyaging. Yeah. It's very important, and I think in every yacht, to have a really nice pantry. Yes. So in this boat, when you come down the stairs, you have Good. these big yeah. things Kitchen here. addition. And then you've got a deep, deep mm -hmm. locker Tons of storage. for storage. Yeah. This boat, we and the dagger board boat. The dagger board mm. is there, and it yeah. takes up a little bit. Absolutely. This one has the keel. This one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that boat. We prefer non dagger board. Okay, I prefer a dagger board. <laughs> um, on on this side, you have a toilet and sink. Um, it's it's not a wet. It's a cute little. It's not a wet space. Okay. So no shower here. No. But it's nice and clean and big, actually, and it has. Oh, yeah. Somebody yeah. put their bum against the. Oh, oh, I did that. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Usually it's Craig, but the finishings are nice. It's nice Corian counter. Oh, and, uh, yeah. and then if you go back in, in the in the port side, you've got a, a mm. an opportunity to make this a queen or a split. So these yeah. are just light panels, right? And you can take that out, slide it underneath the bed, gotcha. and then we have a little thing there and a cushion, so it can be one or the other. Um, Perfect. Yeah. It's very straightforward. For kids. Um, yeah. Or guests. Or guests or whatever. Everybody should get it because you you The option. It's very underneath. versatile. Yeah, it's not expensive yet. Yeah. Gonna get right in here. Mm -hmm. Pinky peek. Slots of window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A hatch there. And a hatch. And as you come Cabinet. forward, I mentioned this is a full shower here. See? Ah, okay. So the water closet is separate and the shower is over here. So this is a complete wet space. Oh, this is awesome. So it's split up. That's awesome though. But just so you know, if somebody wanted one that was just a wet locker, shower, toilet, and they have the other storage, they could have that. If they mm -hmm. want them to both be wet, toilet, shower, whatever, we can do that. It's, mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter to us. It's what people want. And then this is uh, another master suite on the opposite side. Huge. In a high performance boat like this, your hull is, this is your hull right here. Yeah. Okay. So the hull's going down here. Okay. So this bed is pitched out over, over the, the top of the bridge. There. About it's three three feet off the water, basically is the right. clearance. And it's the only way in a high performance cat of this size to keep the hull fineness ratio narrow enough to achieve really high speeds. Mm -hmm. And so we, we make that. And what's nice about these beds is that at anchor they're really comfortable because mm -hmm. you've got all the wind coming in. Yeah. When you're underway, if it's rough and you're pounding into the wind, these are noisier berths. So people will either sleep in the back okay. berth on a passage or they'll sleep in the salon couch area. Right. Because anytime you're forward in the boat, with the, the bows are so narrow, the water is really rushing. Mm -hmm. Because actually in a strong wind in this boat, you'll be tooling along at between 13 and 16 knots mm -hmm. um, if you're reaching. And that's really high speed, you know. Mm -hmm. The water's really, really pushing along. Yeah. yeah. So cabinetry is in here. That space it's like a there, little dressing room. That space there, honestly, we can put a bulkhead right across there, and that can become more deck locker. Okay. Gotcha. It's really what people want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're very much a semi-custom builder. Right. The next boat that we're launching, the hull is bright orange. Interesting. <laughs> and the decks are light gray, and the wood is zebra wood. Okay. It's like a super modernist, kind of flashy looking super. cool boat. Yeah. yeah and so good. everybody gets to choose their hull color, their fabrics, their flooring, their everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, the generator. Ooh la la. Let's do this. Okay. I'll get over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So oh, yeah. It, the generator is a midships on the boat. It's okay. a 6.5 kW Northern Lights. It's in a sound shield, and then this is sound shielded. Okay. And the reason yes. okay. why the generator is here. And all these mechanicals are here. See how everything's accessible? There's mm -hmm. not a, a hose or a wire or anything you can't get right to. That's awesome. But the reason this is here is our fuel tanks are, are down below, underneath okay. here. Our generator is here. 
-hmm. Our batteries are running underneath the seat. All the really heavy weights, anything we can center in the boat is hugely important because on a performance cat, we have a sharp bow and slightly wider sterns. You sit back on your haunches and drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the weight centered, you do more of this, okay. hobby horsing, okay? Yeah. In yeah. the inhibition of hobby horsing, the ability to cut it down vastly improves performance, but it also makes the boat much more comfortable when you're underway, and particularly when you're in larger seas. Yeah. That's also why the downhelm is better, because it's almost in the center of the boat, and mm -hmm. it's at the lower part of the boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're in a flybridge boat, you're yeah. at the top of the fulcrum. Yeah, we're not into the yeah, flybridge at all. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't. <laughs> we <laughs> always end up going sports seating something. Yeah, so we tried oh, to keep it get nice a look open. at the steps. Yeah, right. Offset. Connected. So they can take a bus room. Those are called tread stairs. Plenty of room. Yeah. And the reason for that is that the boat is quite high off the water. Mm -hmm. And if you cut back to make the stairs less steep, you're cutting underneath the bridge. Yeah. And then you're protruding out and you're having hydrogen splashy, splash. resistance and splashing. Yeah. The, the, under, the, the hulls under this boat are a pure form hull shape. They just mm -hmm. go like this. There's no tricks, there's Good. no bumps, there's no chines. It's just, a, it's like a dolphin swimming through the water. Okay. It's just a much more clean hydrogen. Oh, I really like this boat. boat. Right. Oh. So what do you think of prices as is, like the one I'm standing on right now? Okay, yeah, so <laughs> uh, this particular boat with lithium ion systems, it's Spectra water maker, generator, air con, all of everything. Which I want, and washer dryer. Yeah, washer dryer. The full cruise equipped boat with the carbon mast is $1.7 million. Okay. The boat uh, with an aluminum rig is between 1.6 and 1.65 in that range. Okay. And that's a fully cruise equipped boat. Yeah. The base price is $1,399,000. Okay. okay. And that, but that's you want that, a lot yeah. of these features anyway, right? So yeah. 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 I mean, the next tow we're launching is number six. Um, and uh, we're, you know, we commenced on seven. Like I said, we're only building three of them. Yeah. They take a long time to build. Yeah. yeah. And we also built a 62. Um, Oof. And we did 176 flybridge, by the way, but mm -hmm. it was an ultra high performance flybridge called Skimmer, which unfortunately arrived in uh, Tortola and was severely damaged. Oh. Yeah, that was very, very sad, yeah. Um, I mean, the best thing about this boat is the quality. Really, yeah, right? no, it's very beautiful. Like, it's yeah. very beautiful. And, and, and fast, and well appointed. And your critiques. You're interested yeah. to hear my critiques? Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't find many. It, we can't never afford it. It's out of our limit, yeah. but it's beautiful. I mean, definitely for somebody who cares about speed and beauty. Yeah, this is for the viewer who's like, I want performance and I also want- And I also want a nice galley. galley so. and Most of the uh, buyers of our boats so far, they've already owned <laughs> one or two other performance yacht sailboats. Okay. Um, some are coming from, well, one owner sold a Katana to get this boat, one under sold a St. Francis to get this boat, one mm -hmm. guy was a J-boat racer, another guy sold a Katana to get this boat. It's like the capstone boat for people that are getting their final, you know, kind mm -hmm. of, because it is, yes, it's an expensive. Yeah. It, I liken it to uh, like a BMW M series. Right. That's yeah. kind of what it is in terms of quality. And I drive a Nissan Micra. Okay. And I'm very happy with okay. that. You know, that's as long as it's not as ugly as Prius, I'm okay. No. No. Okay, we just got off the Balance 526, and it is one impressive catamaran. Yes. Definitely for those that want performance. As you saw, there was a very nice uh, owner of the company who did a very detailed walkthrough. So obviously carbon fiber and a bunch of stuff that makes it ultra light and super performance. But what did you think of it inside? It's also beautiful inside as yeah. well as fast. It's, it's about of our price range, but yeah. uh, we would definitely we would definitely what get one of that those we could afford. 1.6 million or 1.7, somewhere in there. More than but we it, can afford. it did have the washer and dryer yeah. and had double sinks and beautiful, Lots of beautiful finishes wood. everywhere, yeah. the upholstery, the, the wood, the countertops, everything that I love. And uh, high tech and, and uh, modern and like the, all of the systems were very organized. Yeah. And, Accessible. Very impressive boat. If you're thinking of an Utramur or something because you want a performance boat, I would actually steer you towards yeah. this because it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. It's carbon fiber, it's light, it's fast, but it's also interior is not yeah. Spartan. No. It's beautiful inside, the lots of storage. Are big, yeah. And you have the option to get so dagger boards or not. Yeah. You would choose yeah. not, but you could. And, you could uh, get dagger boards, yeah. Sacrifice one of the dressers down below instead. Mm -hmm. But um, we really like that, that's for sure. We didn't really have. Nothing bad to say. Very nice boat.
If you can afford it, you can afford 1.6 or 1.7. Now he did talk to us about that boat we've already sh shown you on a previous episode. The 45? 45, 450 something. Anyways, a 45 foot uh, balance. And it is way more reasonable. He said it's in the 600s uh, for that boat. So it's a big, it's not carbon fiber. Like that one. It's nice. It's not carbon fiber and all yep. that. So it's a little heavier. It's not quite as performance oriented, but we did like that boat if you saw that previous episode. Yeah. So there's kind of balance has it both areas covered. If you want a really nice boat, just a nice boat. That 45 foot one is probably more in our speed. And then if you've got money to spare and you want for really performance, you get this one back here, over there. The four, 526, which is super sweet. Yeah, it was wonderful. All right, let's go on to the next boat. Hello. Bye. Bye. So there, that's the 526 from Balance. It is an amazing boat. Unfortunately, unless I have a long lost relative that's gonna bequeath us a boatload of money, that won't be our future boat, but still worth seeing. The next episode is the Neil 51 foot trimaran. Now we've never done a trimaran in this series before, but people were asking about it, so we we're gonna show it to you. Now nobody offered us a guided tour like this last episode, I wish, but we didn't get it. So it's gonna be just Janice walking around, filming and telling you what she thinks of the boat. So just picture it being like you being at the Annapolis Sailboat Show and walking around with her. So there you go. If you enjoyed this episode and found it informative, give it a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. And I'd wanna do a special thanks to the patrons that support the channel, cause it's really without them, this probably wouldn't happen. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.